<laughs> and now we're actually live. Hey, everybody, guess what? We're back for another episode of Couch For It. I am your host, Drew, and I am always joined on this great, gigantic blue couch that spans an ocean because it defies physics. Bye. <laughs> well, after that fantastic intro of... Uh, of <laughs> we're never going to nail this intro. I have a feeling that's going to be a thing. Um, no, I refuse to memorize an intro. I just, I'm going to tell you right now, I refuse. It's going to happen the way it happens every time, which is... Off I'm, the cuff. Yes. Just completely off the cuff. It is. Uh, it's, it's part of my natural charm to just <laughs> ramble for a minute. <laughs> it gets us in the mood. We get all this rambling out of the way, so we have pro-rambling later on. <laughs> exactly. It's how, we, it's how we make the big buck, the big podcasting books. Yeah, it's how you and I make, make our big cheese money. Hang on. I've just got to fill my mic one second, sorry. <laughs> See, we make so much money that she has to fiddle with her mic. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't plugged in properly. Right, okay. Um, so, yeah. <laughs> I'm Molly. I don't know if I said that. Hi, I'm Blonda. Um, yes, so this is episode two of Altered Carbon. Yes, technically episode 13 altogether, which is pretty great. Yeah. Uh, we've been doing this for a while now. We've been doing this for four months, three months? A little over three months. A little over three months. Yeah, that's that's a scary thought. That's a very scary thought. It um, is, but we've but made yeah. it. We've made it this far. Uh, like, if, if a relationship get, get, can get past two months, then you know it's okay. Exactly. Um, so. And we've got three months, so we must be fine. We'll we do must another. Be like... fine. We're gonna we're gonna have a million more episodes of this. Oh god, shoot me now! Right, so we did. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we watched Altered Carbon. Some of us watched it earlier today. Some of us watched it moments before. Mm, I finished it eight minutes before we went live. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Something like that. So we're doing really good. Um, and In my defense, it's been a three hellish weeks at work, and I have not had a free moment of myself. <laughs> so. But it's okay. So you got to enjoy this on your way home. So since you watched it most recently, what were your which what's your first thoughts? All right, I will go into my initial impressions. Um, oh yeah, that's what we having call it. initial impressions. Yeah, having seen it before, um, my secondary my second impressions of watching this is this episode sets up so much stuff so well because you don't think about like at the moment it's just like a bunch of scenes you're like okay kind of see how all those connect but by the time you get to episode 10 you're gonna be like oh and that's how you do foreshadowing and that's how you do everything else because once we get to the end Valanda, you're gonna think back to episode two and be like oh, i see where all of those things meet here this is very well written uh -huh. Because I, I in, if that's the case, I, I, I spotted that there were some like, uh, here's some plot dumps, uh, here's some info dumps you need. There definitely uh, are some info dumps, yes. I, I, I spotted those, but they weren't like really in your face. But if this is like one of those foreshadowing, like there's a big bunch of information, like if you're a D&D &D player, you should be taking notes because this stuff's going to come bite you in the ass later. Where's your if book? This, <laughs> sorry, where's my book? If this is, <laughs> where are you? where's your notepad? Um, if this is what this episode is, then by Jove, they hit it very well because I did notice. And it, I'm normally pretty good at going, oh, that's a foreshadowing. Oh, that's a plot device. It's all, A lot of it's going to make way more sense once we get to the end, I promise. Because even when I, when I remember watching this initially, and I was like, okay, this is setting up some stuff, but how does this really pertain to the main plot of find out who killed me, a uh, random <laughs> dude? And then you're like, ah. <laughs> Um, yeah, but what are they, your initial impressions of this? Uh, I, I, hang on, I have to go to my notes. I believe my notes say fucking awesome. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'll stand by that note. Um, no, it was, it was really good. I really enjoyed the episode. Um, there were fighty scenes in it. There mm. was exposition in it. There was, uh, in my behalf, the eye rolly. Oh my god, I can't believe they're going to do this. Um, it was really good. Just, I, I liked a lot of it. I liked, I liked. To be honest, exactly the same glowing recommendations I had at the end of the other one are still holding true on episode two. It's consistent over two episodes, which <sighs> there's nothing, but over two episodes, it's consistent. It is. Um, so would you like to dive into the first scene, which in my opinion, watching it both the first time and the second time is like, this is a weird starting point. Oh, yeah. So we, we start out with like the, 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 the voiceover thing, mm -hmm. which I think is... Actually, if you listen to it really fucking deep, like real, real, like oh, that's a bit of a yeah, yeah. If you think about humanity like that, we really are scum. Um, uh, despite yeah. this voiceover, however, we start off with this kind of bluish tone water, and we see a boat and a and a fishing boy, a uh, little 
fly fish thing. Um, and then we we pan out a bit. We see a boat on a lake surrounded by all this like uh, it, it looks serene. And then in the background, you can see I assume the city um, yeah. all taking place. And then you just see this body like come from the sky and descend <laughs> into the water, um, which is just incredible. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> it was so good um the visual on it was stunningly beautiful they they picked um like the whole thing is that really cool blue tone um which i think is supposed to show like a detachment or from humanity because they do that color again a bit later on uh um, yeah i think so thick, um and it's basically you find out that it's this woman that has been dropped from whatever height into this uh into this pond or lake or whatever it is and she's wearing this really thin white like dress type thing and she has blonde hair um and it there's nothing in this scene that stands out and goes oh this is a bright red token there's nothing like that in here it all like nope. fits into that kind of like muted color tones of blues and it looks incredible and also it being this particular series i figure it's a thing uh, she, you can see everything um that there's nothing hidden despite the white like yeah this red. this series is for those of you watching at home uh who want to watch along with us if you didn't catch it from the first se- uh, episode, this is kind of a real don't watch this in public necessarily show. Like, uh, I remember don't... watching, I watched a couple episodes at work, and it, it's one of those things of just like, well. <laughs> yeah, this is definitely not suitable for work. No. Uh, now, granted, I think people have watched worse things at work than this, but you don't watch it at work. Watch it, uh, and don't watch it where someone might walk in, because there's some some questionable scenes <laughs> Oh my god, like, this episode, I think, covers everything, like, uh, not suitable for work you could possibly cover. Oh, yeah. There's beautifully, beautifully colourful language in here. I was like, they did that on a Netflix show? I'm so happy. <laughs> the language is, is, you cover all the bases with the language, and uh, you cover basically every genital. Yeah, like, uh, that, that th- I think last week you were like, oh yeah, she was naked. And this was like, oh my god, you can see everything. Everything, huh. yeah. Wow, um, that's, um, I did not expect to see Dick this early in the series, but <laughs> there we go. Uh, so I actually do want to point out, I want to say one of my favorite things from the first scene, though, is the fishing boat goes over to the woman who crashes into the water. And there's a scene where the, the little boys try to pull her onto the boat. And the older guy with who I assume is his dad, I mean, but who fucking knows? Yeah. It's like, what are you doing? Do you want us to get arrested? It's not our problem. Just let her go. And I was like, man, that sums up just how shitty this world is. Just like, oh, yeah. we found a dead body. Well. <laughs> I, I I thought it was like one of those just like really interesting things. One, it also like delivers the, uh, this world really has gone to shit. Um, mm-hmm. Like scenario of you can't help a naked woman, dead naked woman out of like, she doesn't need help, she's dead. But you you can't deal with the body. Well, just, let's, you know, yeah, it's not you right just, to leave it. I think that's what the kid says. Like, you can't. Yeah, can't he's, like, he's like, I don't, we shouldn't leave her here. And the, yeah. the guy's like, yeah, it's not our problem. Yeah. And then the kid lets her go. Um, so as we now learn that all the shitty things in the world come from our parents. So yes. uh, that's exactly what has happened here. <laughs> uh, yeah. And so this is a this is a good setup scene because you have the voiceover with Kovach saying something very deep. And honestly, I can't remember what it, it was. was. It was to do with peace being an illusion. Yeah. Basically, like, all peace, peace is, is an illusion. The it's only thing humans understand is, oh, yeah, because it's talking the whole time. Yeah. And the last line is the only thing we really understand is war. And it cuts to a, a post battle where there's just a bunch of dead bodies everywhere covered yeah. in ashes. And it's a very poignant cut. Like it's very well done. Yeah, and it's re- it's really well like uh, like faded across. Um, yeah, so it does this, and it, it's like and it's kind of like war scene, and there's lots of ash falling around. There are corpses everywhere, and we see original Kovacs uh, like like uh, basically crying like no, mm-hmm. like at, like the end of like platoon where you see him like drop on his knees. It's very similar to that. And then again, it just kind of like blends into uh, the Kovacs that we know in his hotel room where he's in bed and kind of wakes up and there's ash falling everywhere inside this room. I'm like, what the fuck is this going on? And then he wakes up again, actually wakes up. And he actually wakes up to a raven screaming at him. Poe yep. and a, and then next to his bed is Poe and a woman just standing there. Yep. Which his, his reaction is my favorite because he just gets out of bed naked and Poe is like playing the indignant person like, oh no, uh, keeps trying to find things to cover him with. <laughs> 
actually, actually, in reflection, this is actually a very funny thing because, like, um, obviously he gets out of bed completely naked. You see his butt and everything, and it's amazing. And like, Baho, they spend like the entire scene like hiding his dick. They just oh, yeah. do. They, they find things like uh, Poe grabs uh, like the uh, the woman who's turned up. Takes the his woman's patch. briefcase. <laughs> briefcase gives her, and then he takes up the bloodied rags, which were his clothes, and gives it to him once he has to take the suitcase away and give it back to the woman. And they spend this entire episode, like this entire like scene here, trying to cover up his dick. And it's like, but, oh, maybe that's just their clever way of not having to show. Not a having dick a dick. Yeah. And then later on, <laughs> just full on dick. But the best part is it's Poe who's freaking out. A computer, an, an AI who AI. is like, no, 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 can't, can't show your dick. Yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's amazing. Uh, it's very it's, good. Yeah, it's, it's a really cool scene actually. Cause, oh, it uh, is. It, it's well done, and it, it sets up a lot. Yeah. Um. Uh, so we figure out that there's a uh, there's this woman. The woman that's here is, is. an attorney for Bancroft. Right. She works exclusively for Lawrence Bancroft, and she is his attorney, or one of his many attorneys, I assume. Yeah. If you're yeah, 900 she... years old or whatever. You're going you can to have a few. You're yeah. going to have a few. Yeah, um, you're going to have a few. <laughs> but she's there to help facilitate the investigation into his death. So she's yep. like, oh, yeah, I'll take you around and, you know, we'll talk to some people and meet some people and blah, 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 blah. Yeah. So it's uh, so she she basically says that they're gonna go do a thing today. Yeah. It's pretty much it's the driving force of this episode. It's the thing yeah. that kicks this episode from Kovach is asleep to here's what he's doing today, kind of thing. It's yeah. like it's that first gear type thing, and they go to, and then we cut to because we're watching people wake up. We cut to uh, the lady cop uh, waking oh, up in her bed. Okay. Yeah, Ortega. Ca Ortega. Uh, I don't remember her first name. It's I want to say it's either Catherine or L Lauren. I don't know. I don't remember. It's a K name. I just can't remember what it is because I'm terrible with names. But it's, it's uh, Ortega. Catherine. And um, Katie. Katie Ortega. Uh, I'll remember at some <laughs> point. Ortega we'll just... has her last name, and that's what they refer to her as because she's a cop, and everyone refers to cops as their last name. Yeah, because anyway. they don't have first names. Exactly. Um... But she wakes up next to a computer. Who turns out to be a tracking device that she's stuck on <laughs> Kovach. And she has an awkward conversation with it because it's a computer that doesn't understand anything. I, I love I love how in the future they still have comp they have like very advanced AIs that can run hotels. Mm -hmm. They can have fully functioning ideas, who can help set up their like patrons with this, that, and the other and protect them. They're very smart. However, a tracking device, um, it's nice to know that in the future we still have a form of Alexa who doesn't understand the questions we ask about. Yes, it's beautiful. And it's just like, <laughs> I don't understand the question. I don't understand the question. Yep. Uh, and it's called Hawkeye, I think. Yeah, it's called Hawkeye, which is, first of all, great name for a tracking device. <laughs> yes. Uh, well played. <laughs> so it cuts from this scene of her waking up to her and her partner in the gym at the police precinct, where she's yeah. she's sparring with him. Because that's how she likes to wake up for the day, is immediately yeah. get into a training fight. It's what I like about this is that he's teasing her in the way that a partner would like. Why aren't you? Why don't you wake up and eat toast or cereal like a normal human being? Yes. <laughs> it's like I don't need your comments on my personal life. You don't have a personal life. Like in that little sparring between the two of them, we learn so much about her. We learn oh, yeah. that she's an individual who doesn't have a life outside of work, and it's awesome like it was so naturally written in it was very funny i very much enjoyed it um and also in this scene we find out that she has i think a dead dad yes this is where we find out there is a picture up on the wall of like a police officer and the last name is ortega ortega octagon so there's octagon on the wall wow that's just rude <laughs> hey we caught the robot spencer so <laughs> okay that's <laughs> fair i guess Mm -hmm. right so we find that she has a dead dad who was also uh, a police officer um and it's like oh that's that's not nice. it's just like this nice little very subtle like little crossfade from her being like really annoyed and sitting down and seeing that her hands are bleeding because she's gone like way like she's gone hard or gone home and she went hard and like she busted like the back of her knuckles or something and it's this really nice little crossfade um yeah yeah it's it's cool um we learn a lot in that just from that just that little scene it's we do interesting um and then I think Hawkeye actually goes off here and says that oh, yeah. the target is in Psychosec. Mm -hmm. Which, first of all, I really want to know what Psychosec stands for because it is a nonsense made-up word. But it's it doesn't... Psychotech. It's like psychological tech, right? 
<laughs> yeah. I'll, or I'll, physics. I'll, or I'll physical. buy that. I don't think they ever explain it. It's an interesting kind of thing, but it doesn't explain what like it's shortened for. Uh, but you go here because the attorney takes Kovach here because this is where rich people clone bodies. Like they make like clones oh, for yeah. sleeves. And because yeah. he's going to the Bancroft family vault. Yep. Which actually, before he gets there, they're walking down this line and like of holograms of being like, you deserve this sleeve. Get this sleeve. Put and your it, wife in this sleeve. <laughs> yeah. There's <laughs> some amazing. awkward <laughs> things here. And he's just like, Kovac, I love Klo Kovac's like, reaction to everything because he's just like, aha. Uh -huh. <laughs> so, like, he's just very, just like, well, I guess that's a thing. I kind of wish <laughs> it was not. <laughs> Yeah, he, he makes like some offhanded comment of like, hmm, I guess they don't even, mm -hmm. uh, mm, okay. <laughs> which is, which is kind of cool. And uh, yeah, they, they go along to the, the family vault. Mm -hmm. And this is, again, where we come across that really kind of like really cold blue motif. Yes, where, very blue. And I think they do that for a reason, because it's cold, it's supposed to be clinical. And they raise moral questions along here, like uh, he goes across to look at one of the uh, one of the clones or one of the the family, whatever it is. It's a clone, yeah. Um, and he goes near it, and it opens its eyes and looks at him. And he's like, "Are they aware?" <laughs> and they're like, "Oh no, no, they've got their memory wiped, and they have a blank stack in them. They'll be fine." Like, yeah, they're just electronically stimulated occasional or electrically stimulated, so they don't lose uh, muscle, muscle tone. tone. Yeah, it's like, wow, that's a. Uh, yeah, because yeah. people have so far. I don't know if it turns up in the rest of the series. Don't consider the whatever it was inside, like the inverted commas, the soul thing, which is a, a reoccurring thing. Yeah, um, uh, I this, picked up with all the, the this, this entire show deals heavily with the soul, like what makes a soul and what is a soul, and yeah. all that other stuff. Um, it, it, the motif continues, so be prepared for okay. that. <laughs> good, uh, good, because it's one of the more interesting ones. Um, I agree. There was, like I th honestly, I think like, episode ten wrap up like on the, just the motifs alone could be an entire hour because holy crap! I, um, I think you're right. This is a this show is very heavy and like it's so heavy digging into stuff. Like you can watch it like surface level, um, and it's just like yeah, this is a good show. But if you like dig down into it, holy crap! Mm -hmm. um, this is this is deep as fuck. There are literally like again, it's working out like identity your identity isn't necessarily your body and that's like picking you up and putting you one body to another to another to another is one thing entirely like that's who you are it doesn't matter who you are on the outside but on the flip side it's like okay you're moving from body to body what what's in it first yeah. how, how did you get to being who you are without being in a body to start with maybe you don't need to maybe just an algorithm it's just oh it's just it's this scene I love, that question I love so much oh, on so much of a deeper level than it was just surface of like, are they conscious? No, they're fine. And then moving on. <laughs> yeah, it just moves on because um, they talk about, I mean, you don't really talk about it, but this vault is full of every member of the Bancroft family has several clones here just in yeah. case anything happens. And he's kind of talking about, he's like, oh, what happened the night Bancroft died, uh, blah, blah, blah. And they tell him he came back from Osaka or he was needle cast back from Osaka because also if you're rich, you don't bother getting in a plane. You just beam your DHF around a planet or whatever. Yeah. So uh, they, they come across this little video of him being needle cast back to the body that he was in when he killed himself or yes. didn't kill himself or got killed or whatever. whatever. Um, and his wife is there. Yep. And, and she gives him a kiss. And then that's where the video cuts out. Yeah. And he asks... Why is it only this long? And they're like, oh, because if we record more than that, it violates privacy. So it's really just for quality assurance, which, uh, okay. <laughs> but there's, then... there's something in me is just like, they're going to come back to this shit at some point. They've got to. I mean, come on, the cameras can't just turn off. That's BS. Like, I can't believe that. But then Lawrence Bancroft walks in fucking <laughs> straight up dick swinging naked. Just whoop, there, <laughs> here he comes. <laughs> There was no warning, nothing. No, it's just he like... comes in just unannounced, which is great because, yeah. like a rich person, he's just like, eh, fuck it, you know, whatever, I'm going to be here, and uh, you're all employees of mine, I don't care what you think. Yeah, I don't care if you think my dick is tiny or giant yeah. it doesn't matter to it him. It doesn't matter. But there was literally no warning, I'm like, oh! <laughs> nope. It's, it's, it's <laughs> naked Lawrence just... and his Fun. wife just walk in. Yeah, just walk in. And then Kovach proceeds to grill them and be like, hey, why were you here when he was needle cast back? What were you doing this night? What was going on here? Like, he's just like throwing out questions because 
he is a capable investigator. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's, he's he's supposed to be asking these questions. Yes. And like Bancroft at the end is like, no, I'm not putting up this shit. You're an employee. And they, he takes him out for a, a quiet tour, probably a reprimand or something he's used yes. to be able to give to people. And he's like, if you don't stop this quick enough, you're going back into ice. If I die, die, you're going back on ice. And like, <laughs> oh, I'm not hero. Hero basically turns around and says, go fuck yourself. Uh, there are questions I have to ask. Um, and you may not want to hear it, but I have to ask them. So. My personal favorite is he's like, don't threaten me again, which he just, yeah. he says it very funny, like, don't threaten me again. Because I love the fact that at any point, he could just straight up murder Bancroft. Like, it wouldn't yeah. even be a problem. Just like, and you're dead. Or at least your yeah. sleeve is dead. Like, yeah, whatever. Yeah, it's, it's, it's just one of those, like, you don't even, come on, dude, what's, what's wrong with you? Um, yeah. It's like, do you know who you're screwing with? You literally brought me out of ice to do this. Yeah. Um, which was... It was very interesting. I I just love those little kind of like yeah don't don't do this. Um, <laughs> which is it was just cool. It was just cold and very very cool. Um, it, it was really good. Uh, and that wrap more or less wraps up that scene. Um, yeah. Because um, again, think, we're we're getting rolling in this episode. You know, we're yeah. It's yeah. It's still if it, yeah. I I definitely pick up the point that it was. Um, it didn't seem to have a particular. This is the thing we have to solve this week. No um, no no. And I'm hoping that it stays like that because then it's just one long continuous story it, rather than it is one terrific. continue. I will tell you, it's one continuous story. Yes. Uh, and it is a very well done. It's honestly, it's kind of like a pulp novel where there's there's one big story and little bits get dropped throughout. So when mm. you get to the end, you're like, ah, I see all of these pieces that I saw from here to here. They go here and they are the answer to this. So if you're really paying attention, uh, you might solve it before the character does. Ray. Uh oh also he says he wants any death threat Lawrence Bancroft has received for evidence. Like he wants to go through them. True. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think we're live. It says we're <laughs> live. Uh no no <laughs> no. <laughs> are we perhaps broadcasting somewhere else by accident? <laughs> I believe we are. Are we broadcasting on YouTube when no fucker can find us? We 100% are. I'm gonna go. Uh, I've been ready for 25. Listen, we were live. I'll stitch the videos together. It'll be fine. Oh, hey everyone, welcome. You're now in the middle of episode 13 because I am an idiot. And I forgot the last time I streamed for my actual OBS was to YouTube for, um... Meanwhile in Barovia? Meanwhile in Barovia, yeah. So, let me run, give you a quick rundown, and we'll, we'll just go over. <laughs> and, well, let's go over tonight, because I fucked that up. Uh, quick um... rundown, we talked about the opening scene, which was, um, a beautiful blue, pristine lake, and a body falls from nowhere and smashes into it. We discovered that uh, the fu future is a big pile of hot garbage because uh, they tr this kid is like, hey, we can't leave the dead body here. And his dad's like, no, fuck it. It's a piece of trash. Leave it here. <laughs> um, <laughs> we find out. Uh, there was also some really deep shit. Carry there on. was some really deep shit. We find out that in episode two, uh, you should definitely not watch this around anyone. You're not willing to watch nudity around because you see pretty everything. much everything on both uh, men and women. So... It's great for that. Don't watch it around people you don't want to have to answer questions with. Then we go to a place that is um, where they clone people for rich people, where we find the Bancroft family vault. Uh, we see Lawrence Bancroft's dick. <laughs> we uh, surprise dick. Surprise uh, dick. He just walks can in. We call naked. that the name of the episode. Surprise dick. Do you I think mean, we can get away with that? We could definitely get away with it on, uh, like, our the podcast version. Okay, excellent. All right, I need to write that down somewhere. Carry okay. on. <laughs> uh, and then we, we were saying that we were closing on that scene as we realized that, uh, once again, I apparently have uh, died entirely because I forgot everything and how to run a, a stream and was streaming to the wrong place. Hi, welcome back. How's it going, everyone? There you go. Surprise <laughs> Richard is now the name of the YouTube channel uh, video. <laughs> That's that's fantastic. Thank you very much. That's Undead, a good one. That. You are an absolute fucking hero. <laughs> Thank you. So we're going to go long tonight, and the YouTube channel will have the entirety of what we did, so the first 20 minutes, and then the catch-up, and we'll continue from there. 
Yep. Sorry, I did. I apologize <laughs> to anyone who's watching who was th- or who kept checking the channel. It's like, what's going on with Twitch? Am I wrong? Nope, I am wrong. No, it was Drew us. It, wrong. We'll, we'll take that one. We'll take the one on the cuff. So, oh, uh, Rhonda, please. I'll- I'll, I'll, con- I'll, I'll save you. Um, so after we have this conversation with Bancroft, where he's like, go fuck yourself. Uh, I need to ask these questions. And Bancroft is like, fair play. Um, we go down to the foyer again, where he, where our, our not hero hero uh, meets back up with the attorney. And they come across the lieutenant again. And they're like, what the hell are you doing here? And she's like, well, I'm being dodgy and dicey and not completely tracking you. Um, and then I, she has an effect which happens so quickly and so wonderfully that I almost missed it as a visual effect. She gets a phone call and it lights up one of her eyes bright blue and she has a minor conversation and basically says she's leaving and doing a thing. And then the scene ends. I'm like, I, because all of the visual effects in this are so streamlined and so well placed and so well done, I almost missed it as a visual effect. Like I saw the blue, I'm like, yeah, that's cool. Oh wait, no! That someone had to someone had to put that in. Yes, Shit. it's and this very is well this is done. why I love the visual effects on this. They clearly spent time making this look a certain way and making everything work. They sp- they clearly had to spend the time and probably the budget on it to make it look this good. But it was so seamless. I like I almost completely forgot. Like there are so many things that happen in here. Like um, when they're in the police station and they uh, they're at their desk, they have like these glass things with like projected whatever it is on there um and there, there's those little scenes and they're walking around there are holograms everywhere and the weird visual effects which happen actually shortly i'll talk about in a minute um on one of the scenes with Ho and his companions you just forget that they're visual effects because they're done so well they're just oh they're just so good they're very good um okay i'll, I'll stop coming over the uh <laughs> visual effects now. no 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 it's an appropriate reaction <laughs> everything in this show is so well done it is the Hey, here's a bunch of money. Make a cool sh- sci-fi show, and they fucking pulled it off. They went, oh, they paid attention so to every fucking cool. detail. They, unlike our last show, when they did something, they stuck with it so that it, when you yes. see it again, you're like, I know what they're doing. They're doing this thing. I know how their communication works. Exactly, it's very <laughs> well done. Um, but mm. to dive back into the episode itself, we go from the psychosex scene to the okay game. The poker game. Oh, I love the poker game. Poe yeah. walks into a room and it kind of like fritzes a little bit. So you see it's actually an empty warehouse. But it's a bunch of AI people playing a poker game together. Like a bunch of AIs <laughs> sitting down to play poker. And Poe walks up and they kind of like shit talk him for a minute. Like, ah, uh, you're just a, you're still an AI hotel. That's stupid. Yeah, like uh, we've all converted to like strip bars. <laughs> yeah, one guy's a strip club, calls himself Z-Rod. Uh, yeah. One guy and then the one does like virtual reality sex or something. Yeah, that's um, the. And then one guy does a music is a music hall. Someone uh-huh. is in. Mandy is enslaved, but you don't really get more than that. Yeah. Uh, and there's a there's this is I actually like this. There's an AI who is a who's deaf or mute, and he like signs at Poe, and they're yes. just like again, really well done. Characters are communicating in multiple languages several times, and they just roll through it because Poe answers him. Yeah. without a problem it's it's very what well, like that those these little aspects in here the things you don't really think about like they switch between languages so quickly and without worrying and nobody like reacts like oh you're suddenly speaking a different language or oh yeah. no you're you're you know you're using sign language i don't understand they don't they just get on with it like yeah they're just like well he asked me a question i will answer the question or he yeah. said something i will respond to that thing i don't need to be like oh you signed a thing no it's just fuck but- here we go. Yeah, they don't even draw attention to it, which no. is what I love about it. It's like it's exactly how it should be. It's like you shouldn't draw attention to the fact that these people are, are you know, are, are signing or they're using a different language or like, for example, that they're male or female working in a certain like you know, a brothel. Um, like you don't need to call attention to these things. They just no. are, and that's how it should be. This is how the world should be. Exactly. It shouldn't be the shitty world that we see in altered carbon, but that's how the world should be. If it, if it had a lot of the, okay, I do love this. Alter Carbon deals with, hey, all these, like, social issues that, like, we are currently dealing with are all solved. No one cares about cross-sleeving or, you know, people speaking another language. Like, no one cares about any, like, anything like that. This entire show focuses on there are a bunch of rich people who are assholes and control too much and is the soul of thing. That's it. Like, the, the deep questions yeah. of the show are that. Social issues that we deal with that you're like, oh, is it worse or better? It's better. No one cares who you are or what you are. Like, they're just like, here we go. I 
can see and accept and move on with it. Like, yeah. without the, a problem. Yeah, the, like, the only differences, inverted commas, the only differences are whether you're rich or not. That's that's the only exactly. thing that I'm really this picking a, up here. This show's very much about class. Like, the class yeah. issue. Yes, exactly. And, and again, it harks back to that, that um, it, it doesn't matter what body you're wearing, it matters who you are. Exactly. Um, and it's, it's just, it's like, it shows it in, like, the positive of, like, it really doesn't matter whether you're male or female or, or, or not, yeah. or whether you're, like, fucking everything that moves or you decide not to or whether you're straight or not it's like it doesn't actually fucking matter no. it just matters as to whether you're a dick um, exactly and that very much speaks to my personal code of i don't care your physical makeup if you're a dick you're a dick and i'm not gonna like you yes and this is this is this show is perfect for that it's so good um and they they like, razz on poe for a little bit and because he's <laughs> why are you still a, an ai hotel no one stays with ai hotels like you really got to get into something else why do you care about humans so much? And Poe's like, well, I want to study humans. Humans are interesting. Like, they're fascinating. They they made us into what we are, and I want to find out more about them. And then he, someone says something, they kind of keep making fun of him, and he just gets up and leaves. He's pissed off. Like, he's clearly annoyed. He just walks out. Yeah, he's like, do you know what? I'm not going to take this shit. Yeah, he's like, I'm not going to come play poker with you guys. You guys are assholes. Fuck you. Yeah, and he, he turns and walks away. There's this one little little detail about this scene that I actually really liked. Uh, there's someone behind the bar at this poker game. Yes, there's like an AI or a fake AI or something <laughs> bringing them drinks, which is... There's an AI serving a bunch of AI drinks. The idea of that made me laugh so hard. I just thought, it's like, what the hell? This is amazing. It's... This is like meta level. This is great. It is magical. <laughs> but we cut from that to the police precinct, I'm pretty sure. We do. Yes, Where... we do. Uh, futuristic police workstations, what I have written down. Yes, um, which are changed... awesome. They look so cool. Yeah, they're very futuristic, but it's kept that kind of like really busy police station vibe to mm -hmm. it. You can still pick up. That's what it is. Like there are people like being arrested and people talking, and like it's that very like these people people are clearly still overworked in the future. It's just a different set of problems. Yes, um, and instead of having multiple files on their desk, they have like the desks look empty for the most part because all their files yeah. are digital. Yeah, everything is digital. There's no no hard stuff. Sorry, just drinking. Um, yeah, so that the, the place looks cool, and they find they uh, like her boss. Uh, sorry, we find out that Otago is missing up there. You know, morning briefing, and the boss comes over and says, "You need to deal with the grieving widow because you didn't turn up this morning." Oh, not <laughs> not grieving like, widow, grieving mother. Yeah, grieving mother. My bad. Yes, yeah, gosh, yes, that's a good point. Grieving uh... mother. And so she goes in and she talks to the mum. Which I love the interrogation room she goes into. It's yeah. this, The police precinct is this big open plan office type thing. And the interrogation room is a glass box in the middle of it. Yeah. Like f full glass all sides. Like so you can, no matter where you're si sitting, can see into it. Yeah. Um, every like there, there's so much like glass in in like the precinct. Like even like the, the captain's uh, office is, is like, mostly dark glass. Yeah. It's glass. Yeah. Um, so she goes in there, she pulls the blinds down because she has to do that because it's glass. Yeah. Um, and she basically, the mother goes uh, along this kind of like uh, idea of, um, uh, why won't anyone release my daughter's body to me? Yeah. Because <laughs> you find out she has been, she's been lost. Coded. She's been converted. Yeah. She's been converted. But right before she walks in there, uh, or taking her part and talk about when is yeah. someone going to tell the, this, this lady that her <laughs> daughter's body is missing that the, the you know san francisco yeah. police department have lost her body <laughs> little, little little misplacement on their behalf a little um, bit. yeah just a little bit of a fuck up here um yeah. but yeah which they're... was harsh <laughs> a little bit <laughs> um, especially considering what we find out at the end of the episode mm -hmm, um mm -hmm. So we go in there, we find out that the daughter, the missing girl, whoever it is, um, she's been, she has religious coding, so she can't be spun up again, yep. even if they do find her. Mm -hmm. So the mother can't actually say goodbye to her. That's why she needs the body to do what, you know, I assume the, the you know, the, the, the funeral. Yeah. And that led, led, led me to thinking about something really interesting is like, obviously, when we lose our loved ones, we know we can't say goodbye to them. So that avenue is cut off. How much worse is that going to be when you know there is an option to say goodbye you still can't have it anyway. Yeah. Like, that is such a... It raises a lot of questions because in this world, oh, a loved one dies. And even if they're like, yeah, you know, when, I'm when I am when die, I don't want to be re-sleeved, whatever. 
you still have the option of spinning them up in a virtual reality setting to mm. say goodbye and tell them you love them and all these other things before, you know, they move on yeah. or whatever. And it's such an interesting idea because dealing with the loss of a loved one would be so much easier if you could just, like, pop them into virtual reality and go hang out for a day. Yeah, like, laters, because, you know, they, they may not be able to afford a resleeve, but yeah. they could be respun up. For example, as they were saying, if they were being murdered, they could be respun up so that they could say, you killed them. Which exactly. Is, you know, and it, really it, raises, great. <laughs> it raises a lot of questions, and it, it it's a very interesting thing of, again, dealing with the soul and, you know, all these other little strange aspects and this is a um, an emotional scene because the mother obviously starts crying because she's very upset. Yeah. And you see Ortega, like, be... She basically goes to give her a hug, right? Yeah, she, like, she, yeah. Hold, she cradles this woman, you know? You see her being yeah. a, uh, a sympathetic person. Like, I understand. Like, I understand it's bad and that I can't help you because I don't have any power here. Yeah. It's like, uh, I will try and help. <laughs> that is how it reads at, at the beginning. Yes, that's how this scene reads... But then gets so much darker later on. <laughs> it really does. It takes a, a yeah. turn. It takes a twist because I didn't. I didn't see that at all. Like, oh, uh, to be fair, I have got in my notes. Why the fuck do I keep flashing back to this like drowning chick? I don't understand. <laughs> <laughs> I understand it now. <laughs> yeah, throughout the, throughout the episode, I think you see the woman f the fall into the water like four yeah. or five times. Yeah, total. It, it, it jumps back a lot. It does. It um, jumps back to either either watching her fall or watching her being in the water or like seeing her face like water, you know, bobbing around. Um, yeah. It, yeah. It, it keeps like interspersing itself in here, and I figured it out. It's because it's whenever like Otago is around. Yeah. And, and it, it, it doesn't. It does not in any way. It's not. They don't overuse it because they're just no. short shots. It kind of use it as a a nice segue where here's the thing scene change. So like. Yeah. It feels like a scene change. It yeah. feels like a here's a transition from one to another. Like exactly. there's usually talking over the top of it. It's usually something profound and deep, or it's the beginning of the next next um, yeah uh, next scene. Which Look. the next scene is one of my favorites. <laughs> oh, I'll let you describe it then. <laughs> uh, Kovac is sitting in the Raven Hotel, looking at death threats, or looking at the footage from the uh, what do they call that fucking house? The Bancroft House. I don't remember. Sun Touch Sun, Sun, Manor. Sun, Sun, Sun Touch yeah. Manor. Yeah. And he's like, oh, this TV's a piece of shit. And Poe's like, oh, it's an antique like yourself. And he's like, yeah, but I can't <laughs> see anything on it. And then Poe's like, okay, why don't you use your Oni, which is... where This is how it introduces us to what they're called. He's like, why don't you use your Oni? And he touches... Uh, Kovacs touches something on his wrist. And all of a sudden, above him is this spinning globe of death threat videos. Just, like, playing <laughs> yeah. out in, like, super high definition. Yeah. And then he's just like, okay... How many more do I have to look at? Poe gives it, him an insane number. Like th it's like 3,600 and something <laughs> for this, this year. Yeah, for this year. <laughs> and yeah. he's like, oh my god. So he's just like, like alright, delete anything from off-world. Uh, then split everything else into three groups of uh, <clears throat> threats of violence, th uh, videos where the person was convicted of violence, and you know who the, the threat maker is, and uh, service, like military or uh, police service. Actually, that that there's there's that's not the third one because he he mentions that afterwards. Does he? Oh, he does. That doesn't. Yeah, yeah. because because he does. He basically because he's like he's the envoy or envoy, whatever you want to call him. Yeah. Um, because they can absorb a lot of information all at once. He's just looking at all of these videos like I still need to cut this down a little bit. This yeah. is dumb. It and is then he has like a little flashbacky moment to his not girlfriend, girlfriend, mental person, and she's like, you know, everyone's angry. That's a universal thing, but not everyone can act on their anger. Some people need the skills. Yes. And he's like, oh, right, okay, let's do people who have the ability, like the skills, the skill set yeah. to do. That. But it, it basically, he cuts it down to, I yeah. think there's like 15, or there's like 30 or something like that. Just yeah, there's something like that. And he's and like, then how about like, that one? That one. Um, and it's, it's a, you know, it's a, we find out li Lily? Lily? Lizzie, for my Lizzie. 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 Um, like, it starts off like Lizzie, and all we can see is a gun. Yep. Um, and we hear like this slight like, distorted thing saying that, you know, I'm going to get you because, you know, uh, I'm going to get you for Lizzie. I'm going to come up to your mansion. I'm going to blow your brains out. I'm going to kill you along those and all these other things and you'll never see it coming. And then he shoots the camera and they, they rewind it. And then, of course, they focus on the gun and there's just serial number. And it, <laughs> it goes from that point. Kovacs is like, he cuts back to Ortega, but I don't remember what she's doing in this scene. Oh, she's home. Because this is yep. the scene where she goes home, and she see her mother's there, and there's this <laughs> nice little dialogue. 
Nice little dialogue. I've got in my notes. It, it doesn't matter. In the future, mums are always still the same. <laughs> yeah, this is true. She, she walks in. She looks around her daughter's apartment like, you're never going to get a man if you live like a slob. Yeah. <laughs> cause, amazing. Because Ortega comes in and she's like, yeah, mom, fine. Just let yourself in anytime you want. And her mom's like, mm-hmm. you don't have any food here. No one's going to respect a skinny cop, a w- skinny cool. woman cop. And I'm not going to let you die because you won't eat an enchilada. <laughs> Which is, <laughs> first of all, the best is just like, I'm not going to let you die because you wouldn't eat an enchilada. <laughs> like, yeah, it's, I mean, it's, it's actually genuinely just like, it was just a nice little scene. And this sets up yeah. a scene that follows after um, yeah. as well, which I thought was really nice. But yeah, just the idea that it doesn't matter how far in the future we come. It doesn't matter like when we get over the bullshit, bullshit, social bullshit we have. Moms, moms are, are still going to be the same. Moms. Yeah. Uh, and I like this scene also because Ortega, there's a there's a crucifix on a table, and Ortega p- picks it up, puts it in a box, and they're arguing for a minute about how the mom's like, "You're too busy to pick up your underwear," and she snatches it from her. And she's like, and then the mom goes and takes the crucifix out of the box, puts it back on the table. Ortega yes. goes over the table, takes the crucifix, puts it back in the box. Puts it back in the box. Yeah. While they're uh, having this nice, it's like it's that that familiar type argument that you have with like loved ones where you're no one's like angry at each other, but you're just kind of like bickering about like your slight differences. Yeah. And it's like, I don't yeah. No, yeah. You know, it's never going to solve it. Like you're never going to get anywhere. You're just doing it. Cause it's comfortable. Yeah. It's, it's something they know. Um, we, we pick up from this that, um, that our, our Lieutenant is, uh, okay with being resleeved. We think she was, yes, yeah, she was a Neo Catholic. I think is actually what they're yeah, called. Yeah. Yeah. who don't have who won't spin up again and she has renounced her coding mm-hmm. uh which means that she cannot take communion the priest cannot hear her confessions she can be resleeved or spun up and a lot of it seems to stem from the fact that her father died in a mysterious way and they have no way of answering what happened to him because the only witness would have been him and he is a neo-catholic and cannot be spun back up yes uh this this gives like a really nice like i didn't see i didn't think about it when i was watching the episode but when we were talking about like the 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 mother of the the victim the the one where the body is missing um mm. and like yes they're they, she's been coded so she we can never say goodbye to her this is a really interesting one because we discuss uh in this scene it's another mother it's another mother talking about her own daughter and her, the fact that her daughter could be spun up yes and she basically says i'd rather you wouldn't get spun up because i don't want your soul to be completely screwed because i see the idiot being that if their souls are spun up they can't go to heaven it's not gonna happen they're just gonna go to hell so we have one mother is like i won't do it even if it catches like your it catches your killer it will destroy me i will cry enough to like flood the world or something there's a bunch of poetic stuff which basically says she's going really yes, fucking it's, sad it's very it's like proper drama <laughs> Yeah, and it's like, to be fair, props to her place and mum, because holy crap. Um, So, like, yeah, she's like, she'll be really sad about it, but she won't do it because she doesn't want to endanger her daughter's soul. And on the flip side of that, literally with the same character, just, you know, with a different mother, it's like, I want my daughter to be spun up. I need to talk to her. I I, I, I don't care about this. Yeah. Yeah. It's really like, now now I'm looking, it's like, that's a really nice little little mirror because it's it's two mums and it's it's both dealing with this one daughter. Um, Mm Mm-hmm. It's, it's very clever, very cool. It's very well done, and then I have so uh, much more respect for it now. I like how the <laughs> scene ends here too, because yeah. Hawkeye goes off. The mom's like, "Should you even have that?" And Ortega just like has to run out <clears throat> because yeah, Kovach like has left the Raven Hotel <laughs> and is going somewhere. Yeah. Um, so first of all, when he's out and about doing his thing, um, he goes to a museum, right? Not yet. First, he goes to the Golden uh... Gate Bridge. Yes, that, so like, we go to a different type of scum. <laughs> yes, we go to like slum housing on the Golden yeah. Gate Bridge. Yes, yeah, so we went initially like like all the scummy lower areas, like we described that being like 40k like uh, hive equivalent, yeah. right? <laughs> so it's kind of like a little bit like flashy neon lighty things. They go to actual genuine scum town. Like yeah. these are con- shipping containers on the bridge. Shipping and containers it, it, and other a couple other weird things because the, yeah. the, the place he goes has this weird like bubble shape to it. Yeah, it has a little. It's yeah, it's it's clearly been built up there around this stuff, but it's not high tech like the rest of no. the world that we've been living in. This is clearly the slum slums. Yeah, um, and he so, he gets off the subway or what? It's basically a subway. It's a weird floating tube that has lights jumping through it, and it looks insane. <laughs> uh, but he gets off that and sees a an ad 
for the museum that has Kel Christ Falconer yes. and the envoys, like has a, a dis, uh, what do you call it? A, um, like a showpiece or whatever, uh, an exhibit. Yeah. There we go. And uh, he picks up a, a a flyer off the ground, and then it, he continues on into his slum trip because he's looking for someone. Mm-hmm. And I love this scene because he goes up the he finds what he's looking for. It's like Elliot's computers or whatever. Goes upstairs and knocks on the door, and then immediately kicks it in. <laughs> he kisses dude like maybe ten seconds. But the <laughs> best part of that, <laughs> the best part of that is because when he kicks in the door, you're like, ah, oh, no one must be home. Some sort of time must have passed. No one must be home. He's gonna like go through this like empty house. Walks in, kind of looks around, turns, and here comes the owner of the shop. Just like, what the fuck did you do to my door? (laughs) It's like you you didn't answer. It's like because we're closed, asshole. (laughs) It's such a good. And then (laughs) it's just it's such a good moment. It's just like uh, he's gonna dig around and he'll look through trash and he'll find a secret. No, the dude's there. He's just, like, and he's just very indignant about the fact he broke his door. <laughs> it's like, what the fuck are you doing, man? Um, so anyway, our, our Kovacs uh, basically goes, uh, yeah, you're the dude who did the death threat because we could see the serial number on your gun. And, and you're a big we... dumb dummy. <laughs> yeah, it's like, how are we not going to find you, you dumbass? All the serial numbers on the guns are linked back to the military personnel. Yep. And we found out this guy is, uh, through conversation, we found out this guy is a Marine or he's was a Marine. Marine. Yep. Was a marine technically is a marine because that's how they go sit. Marine, a marine a medic. medic. Yep, he's a medic. So we have to go. Oh, he's not a killer. He's not he's a killer. killer. Yeah, but then he, he says he'll kill. So he'll kill Kovach because he's killed people before. Yes. Then he goes again. We see Kovach just like demolish somebody because he yeah. goes around a corner and he like fires. Kovach is missing. He's like, what the fuck? And then Kovach just like beats the shit out of him. Just like, yeah. which I love because again. First episode, a lot of it was, oh, he's so badass because he's an envoy, and envoys are so dangerous. And then you finally see him do something, <laughs> and you're like, hey, and fuck. you're like, oh, he is dangerous. And then yeah. they, I'm gonna, I'm gonna kind of spoil something here. He is one of those characters who you see in very few things where it's he's a badass, and he easily just slaps people around until he actually finds someone who is a good fight. Because mm. once he has someone who's a good fight. Then it's like, oh, okay, he's got to actually fight this person and not just more or less put his hand on their head and hold them back like a child. <laughs> like, the, 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 I think the way you picked that up so far is that he's very calm in all of these fights. Like, oh, there's yeah. virtually no expression or um, exertion on his face. Yep, so and he's, he's, him he finishes easy. them very quickly for the most part. Oh, yeah. Like, the fight he, scenes are, like, never more, like, 30 seconds in this. Yeah, he, like, throws this dude around, flips him over, takes his gun, and then, like, hits him in the face with the butt of it and knocks him out. Like, it's yeah. over in maybe 10 seconds flat. Yeah. He so just beats the it, shit out of this guy. And they don't waste time. They just, like, the very next, like, shot, like, click of fingers, like, the dude's tied to a chair. Like, oh, yeah. they don't bother cutting away to a different scene. Like, oh, no, he's back in the chair. Um, nope, he's and then in a have, chair. <laughs> They ha- they have they have a like a, a more you know, more personal conversation and more information is exchanged and they find out more about this like uh, Ava is his wife and his his wife is actually like on ice because she was a hacker and a really good one but she got caught. Which I um, love. Oh, I love the term for hackers in this in this show. They're called dippers, dippers. and yeah. it's like and they they explain what it, like again in such a subtle way. Someone mentions dippers, and then someone just, it's just like the rest of the sentence context. You're like, oh, it's a hacker. I got yeah. it. I don't need yeah. anything else. And yeah. now they can say Dipper again, and you're like, that's oh, a hacker. I got it. Exactly. And it's subtly worked in as well. It's not like a, oh, yeah, she's a Dipper, so she went in and hacked something. No, yeah. it's, it's it's not like a like that explanation. It's just like, oh, yeah, she's a Dipper. She got caught breaking into something. Yeah, it's so like, they it's put very her subtly in worked in. It's not like, here's the thing. Here's the dictionary definition, so you know what's going on. No, it's nothing like yeah. that. You pick it up from context, and it's really exactly. good. Exactly. It's so good. Uh, and you find out the daughter is Lizzie, and uh, he... He doesn't really say anything else, but then because Kovach is a envoy. Oh, hey, we're being hosted. Oh, we're being raided. Love it. Uh, But um, you see Kovach looking at this guy and he sees a mark on his head. And he's like, ah, I know what this is. And while he walks into this guy's bedroom while he's (laughs) freaking the fuck out. And he's like telling him to stay away from there and he'll kill him. Kovach is having this. Uh, inner dialogue basically about how humans are basically and uh, monkeys 
with technology and technology always gets better but humans are the same and they always want the same three things food shelter and sex in all of its forms yes um so so he basically like puts on like this really like like a headband but it's kind of see-through and he sits in this chair and he puts it on and um we see this stack being dropped into this like a uh, cooling fluid or, like or liquid, gel or yeah. something um, and we we go to like the most psychedelic trippy VR thing in the world. It's like this. The is colors cool. on it are insane, and like yeah, it's oh. so psychedelic. It's oh, it's it's amazing. It's like, like it, it. The colors change. Uh, they're really like psychedelic, and they change, and parts of it glitch out randomly. Yeah. Like it's it's very clear. Like oh, this is VR. Like this is a computer world, but it's not the best technology either. Yeah, it's like there's something clearly wrong here. Yeah. Like, like you would expect like antique uh, things to be like glitching out here and here, but there is so much wrong with this place that there is clearly something horrifically wrong. Yeah. And he basically walks through this little place a little bit, and there's a very clo- there's a very specific shot of putting of his foot being in a puddle. Mm-hmm. And I assume that's going to come back because that's that's a uh, that's so specific. So specific. Yeah. It's so specific a shot. It's not just like he's walking through. He's walking through. No, there's literally like a full frame thing of his foot being in a puddle. So. My prediction, I think that's going to come back to do something later. Anyway, (laughs) don't say anything. Uh, I don't know if it's true. Um, So he he walks across and he finds this girl wearing a white dress laying on the ground. Um, And he goes over and explains who he is. His name is, I want to say Taz. He's got cause of Tuck. Tuck. Or Tack. Sorry, my, my dog is has so i get the chicken piece so there's there's the he explains who he is and he's like you must be lizzie and she looks at him and we see flashes of nakedness and a big pink sign that says jack um we just see all these little random things of very quick flashes and then she screams yeah, and then and we he comes out of, he comes out of vr and is at from his point rightfully pissed it at this dude that he's found <laughs> because he's like what the fuck is wrong with you this girl's in a trauma loop like you're making it worse for her uh, and then he, uh, the guy's like, it's my daughter. It's the only way I can see her. Uh, they beat her to death, but her stack was fine. Uh, but she's, she's broken now. Like she can't be spun up because she's, she, her, she's mentally broken. Yeah. Uh, and then you get this little like sepia tone thing of the guy flipping, like breaking the bonds, flipping the table and attacking him. And Kovac is like, <sighs> I think he's like, I don't want to hurt you. And then the guy does it and they get into another fight. <laughs> Which Kovacs quickly, again, in like 15 seconds, knocks yep. him back out. <laughs> and then the very next shot of the dude has been duct taped to a chair. Duct taped to a chair. And he's like, oh, good, you're awake so again. Good. And he's <laughs> Kovacs is now eating cereal, <laughs> sitting across from him. And he's like, you should go out more. Your milk was a month old. <laughs> <laughs> it's just that like cool combination of like, yeah, we're going to do this again. You did the fight thing, but this is dumb. Like, I get it. You're all tough and that's cool. But I'm going to tape you to this chair now. <laughs> and they have another short conversation. Um, and he, I don't remember. He tries to get a little about. more information out of him, but the guy basically like, tells him to fuck off. And he's like, yeah. okay. Gets up to leave. And Elliot is like, uh, are you just going to leave now? And then Kovacs <laughs> turns around, puts some money on the couch, and slides it towards him. He's like, "That was uh, that's for the cereal and the door. <laughs> the door. I'm sorry about the door. <laughs> He's so sorry about the cereal. It's the door. No, no, listen here. The cereal was because he punched him in the face. The door, he's genuinely sad about. <laughs> exactly. So, <laughs> that is a random little scene, but there's so much in there. We learn so much about the world. We learn what's happening to this girl through mm-hmm. one phrase, like trauma loop. Yes. Tells you everything. Like, just those two words tell you everything. And, like, the images you get from that and the, the images we saw previously tells you everything you need to know about that. Yeah. Know about that. It, it's... And it shows... Kovac as being a really fucking cool badass. So shows him as a badass, and also shows him as he's not out to hurt anyone. He doesn't have to. Yes, like, cause, exactly. Sure, he could have. He could have killed this dude, and he even talks about it, like because he's like because uh, he oh, and the, when he asked for he tapes him to the chair, he's like <laughs> he says he doesn't. He didn't kill Co- uh, Bancroft, and he's like you don't know. I could have, and he's like yeah, but you're not a killer. You're gonna protect your daughter, and you know for a fact. That if you killed Bancroft, someone like me would show up. And if you die, she's alone. Yes. Like, in a moment, he's just like, well, he's not going to do anything to jeopardize his daughter. So I know he didn't kill Co- uh, Bancroft. And, like, puts all this together. And as a, I mean, I'm not going to call him sympathetic, but he's just like, eh, I don't need to be here anymore. I'm going to go. 
Yeah, so he's he's not like he's like like the the envoys are portrayed to be like these psychotic killer people insane and terrorists. Like, yeah, yeah, insane terrorists. Um, and he just shows the side of like that's that's not how they think. Yeah, that's just not because we actually do the next scene. I'm pretty sure is yeah. him going to the museum. Yes, to see as he says in his his um inner monologue, it was a chance to see Kelchrist Falconer again as yes. not a hallucination. So he goes to this museum, a bunch of protectorate <laughs> people. Which first of all. This is just kind of weird. A door opens and four, like, the people who killed him in the beginning yeah. go into battle stances and start moving towards him. And <laughs> there's this very awkward shot of, oh, no, is he going to kill a bunch of, ho like, museum <laughs> employees? No, they just, like, part around him like he's just another asshole in the way which he is. And they go, like, meet all these kids who are clearly on a field trip or something. Yes, and they just start, it's like, oh, that gun's cool. Amazing. and. It's amazing. Um, and we just see, we have this like really nice shot, like within like a, like a, a Perspex box or a glass box, or whatever. we see a bunch of what we know to be broken stacks. There's no little lights in them. There's nothing. Yep, they're they're just there in a pile. Um, and this happens to be one of the stupidest, dumbest, funnest scenes I think I've seen is when the little girl is there. And this and is, by the way, before we get into this, this is a classic thing in a lot of shows where somebody goes somewhere and a little kid just starts talking to them about like weird stuff. Mm -hmm. And usually you get to see, you usually get to see the character show a soft side to themselves. Or learn something. Or learn something. <laughs> like the kid will say something dumb, like a question like, oh, do, do you not think that killing is wrong? Um, or like, do you not think my mummy's right about this? And the character's like, well, I have to agree with your mother. Oh, no. Yes. But in this, it just like, no. Because well, in this one, <laughs> he's looking at this and this, he like has a, a piece of a song spire tree. And this girl's like, you're not supposed to have that. And he's stealing's like, bad. Yeah. And he's like, I stole it. She's like, stealing's bad. And he's like, go catch up with your group. Like, basically, just like, fuck off, fuck kid. Off. <laughs> yeah. And she's like, well, Emmeline's over there. And she's still my best friend. This kid goes into a diatribe about her life story all of a sudden. Which, another favorite thing in shows and stuff where people will just tell you a life story. Like, I didn't ask for this. What are you doing? I, I, I think I think they can get away with it because it's a child. <laughs> like, it's it's a very young girl okay, who just well, wants to talk because her best friend's been taken away from her, Drew. That's fair. You don't but understand. Hold on. Quick, quick tangent here because the, another, and this one sticks out <laughs> in my head the most, uh, Star Wars prequels, uh, Amidala asks Jar Jar Binks, says he's a funny person, and how was your day? And then he tells her his life story. And it's like, I didn't fucking ask your life story, Jar Jar. I asked how you were. <laughs> so, what's his excuse? <laughs> okay. I can't comment because I haven't watched the, um, all of the stuff. It's fine. So I don't feel like I need to watch episode one. Now, um, um, quick also note. Uh, if anyone was mad at the actor who played Jar Jar Binks, fuck off. It was, the dude was, it was doing a job. You can hate Jar Jar Binks without hating the person who was forced to put on a weird the head. You money, okay? Yes. We've all done desperate things for money. Let's just exactly. leave it alone. Um. Just leave him alone. Let the guy live. He did his thing. <laughs> We've all done things we're not proud of of money. Don't worry about yeah. it. Um, yeah, so this this kid goes on and um, he's like, Mum said that I shouldn't hold a grudge. Because Grudges will like, kill your soul, kill I think soul. is what she says. <laughs> and he's like, I think he says, like, with all due respect, your mom's an idiot. Yeah, she, she's like, what do you think? And he's like, I think your mom doesn't know what the fuck she's talking about. <laughs> and then, oh, fuck, what else does she say? She says something else, and oh, he fucking, like... Oh, that's it. He, yeah, she asks, like, she, um, she, like, they bring up the idea of friendship. And he's like, yeah, don't have friends. Friends will just hurt you. Or so, they'll just get bullet in the back of the head. Be alone forever. Like, to this 11-year-old girl. It's and then incredible. that's the end of the scene. It doesn't do anything else. It's literally just like, oh, yeah, I get it. We're going to see Kovac be so nice or learn something because nope. from the wisdom nope. of children. And he's just like, fuck you. Like the wisdom, of, the wisdom he imparts to a child. He just receive wisdom. He gives wisdom to a child like, don't have friends. They're just going to die and hurt you. You're better <laughs> off alone. And it's so good. <laughs> it's because, so oh, and that's it. The scene literally just cuts there. It's done. It does. <laughs> It does nothing. I think we get like a single reaction shot on the girl, and that's it. If if that, because I don't remember anything after that. We get one, like, We get a very short true. reaction shot of her being like, "What?" And then, <laughs> which you have notes. I do not. Did we cut to Ortega again, or we cut to the next? yeah the Ortega jokes? We actually jumped to okay. Ortega twice. Like we see one with her where the uh, hologrammy thing goes off, uh, Hawkeye goes off, whatever it is. Uh -huh. um, 
and then we jump back to her at this point and that's when we have the mum daughter conversation about like if she was spun up like she wouldn't want okay her to yeah i remember that um yeah it's just that we were in the flow so i didn't stop us um, okay okay so we would jump to that but what we're actually going to do is we're now going to go to jack off which jack it off jack it off yeah oh. so good it's so so good so he like walks around like uh like 40k hive scum again yeah seeing Place. um you know food sellers and prostitutes and everything else this is great neon signs so it comes across this the bright pink neon sign and it says jack it off and like oh that's the rest of the thing that we yeah. saw in he, like the R vision right next to it he looks down and he sees the the same exact spot where the when he was in that vr with lizzie yeah. where she was laying down mm -hmm. and he's like ah Ah, uh, uh, uh. so he goes in the dude takes his gun and gets told to take a towel but not to steal it don't steal it go to cabin 102 which also he passes <laughs> he walks down the hallway of people definitely peeping through the wall oh yeah it, it's this is literally just like hey guess what perverts come here yeah uh, it's uh like 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 the like the first purple site i because uh, i haven't i have not seen anything about it i thought that maybe it was like a bar or something and of course it's a knocking shop of course it is of course no there's there's so many just like fuck hotels <laughs> like that's all i can call them here <laughs> yeah um so he goes in there and the you know he pays the credits for like the girl to show herself and pays the credits for the girl to come like through the glass thing and like mm -hmm. touch him or whatever it is um and then he, he asks... comes through and basically he just goes I want to know about Lizzie. <laughs> and, and the girl gets pissed off. Fuck off. Yeah. <laughs> and he's like, I'm her mum. <laughs> yeah, which actually, because, and this is where we're introduced to the idea of cross sleeve. Cross sleeve. Because yeah. he's like, no, I'm cross sleeved, but I'm her mother. Uh, I'm, I got hired to do a job, which is wet work. And if I do it, I'll get a sleeve, new sleeve, and Lizzie will get a new sleeve. But yes. somebody's stopping it, and I need help. Yeah. So pretending like he manipulates the fuck out of this girl mm -hmm. it's incredible like um so he, he basically goes on to explain like i need to know if she had any regulars did she have a boyfriend um and the woman goes on to say she had a regular um it was this dude and he was super rich super super rich a meth yeah he was a meth uh, and he was a br if he break it he bought it kind of guy yes if he accidentally kills a girl he'll replace the sleeve and then um kovacs takes the necklace off of the the prostitute um and we see that she like around her throat there are a bunch of bruises yep. um so we go oh oh he's that kind of fuck cool awesome nice 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 yeah. um and the girl says that she doesn't know if there were a boyfriend she doesn't know all the particulars but she will find out and to come back tomorrow mm -hmm. um and he's like okay and then leaves um, actually no he doesn't leave because he again you do in this episode you do start to see kovach as a more sympathetic person but it's a very yeah. odd type of sympathy oh yes he tells yeah. her no matter how much anyone pays you don't let them do that to you you're worth you're more, worth than, more that. than that and then the girl yeah hugs him like, and tells him her real name because everyone knows strippers don't tell you their real name right that's yeah, not a shock not. to anyone here no okay cool oh, oh my virgin ears no that's where that's where it ends because he, he takes his gun and leaves where he is <laughs> met by elliot out outside uh, outside where he has his gun raised and he's like he's like why did you come here fuck you you went after my daughter <laughs> <laughs> he's like dude i'm just trying to find out what the fuck happened because you did tell me everything you, you, you didn't me. tell me anything you were exactly entirely pointless <laughs> yeah and then like Kovac is like oh there's there's people like Kovac like, has to get like hands over the power cell for his gun um and then Kovac is like oh yeah there's there's people behind you and he's like don't fuck with me and then immediately gets hit, immediately <laughs> so gets hit incredible because two combat sleeves fucking come out of the shadows to oh, kill Kovac gosh. and there's a nice little fight scene where elliot Still holds his own, but gets. It takes him a little longer. Kovacs so is fighting some sort of Bane oh villain, <laughs> like a Batman it's, it's villain. Like, 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 like it's a mixture between like a like a Bane villain and like something from Dead Space. With like, because they you have this combat sleeve is fucking hench as fuck, right? He's wearing yeah. no shirt, I think. Um, and he has this like spine which is like metallic and on his back and attached to a power unit and like the spine has like bright red lights in it and you think holy fuck this is this is fucked up and this is where you actually see our protagonist person actually have a bit of a real fight yes because he can't <laughs> overpower awesome. this sleeve because it the, yeah. the big guy because he's super strong so he has to like dodge and fight and he gets thrown around a bunch and punched and then <laughs> i do like how he ends it because he grabs a knife off the dude's belt 
breaks the power unit, and then proceeds to start to beat his ass. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's like during the fight, you can see him like he did when he was getting beaten up in the hotel. You see him being like manipulating the situation for him to get to a place. And he's manipulating it so that he can get the knife because yes. he has no weapons currently. Um, and it was really nice to see because you could see him calculating that whilst getting beaten the shit mm -hmm. out of him. Oh, was so it's very good. And then, um, uh, the, but the fight scene ends just in time for Ortega to show up in her flying cop car and put him <laughs> under arrest for organic damage. Where <laughs> yep. he tells El Elliot's like, who the fuck are you? And he's like, uh, well, 250 years ago, I was on the other side and you should step out of the light and go away before you also get arrested. Yeah. Again, again, showing that kind of like odd what level of, I guess, honor. <laughs> honor um, and, like, to a degree, a little bit of sympathy because he yeah. also knows that if Ellie gets arrested, no one's there for his daughter, and that's yeah. fucked up. And he's going to clearly need the daughter because the daughter is linked to Bancroft somehow. Yes. Um, and she was clearly killed for some reason. Yes. Um, because she did something for Bancroft that only she could do. We don't know what exactly, but I guess the, the plot thickens. Anyway, we so will find this out. Is... <laughs> Yeah, we'll find out. So this is where we have like my only real eye roll, uh, which is uh, he's put inside this little jail cell, and he and Otaga have this. Why don't? Basically, they have this conversation along the lines of like, "You can't control yourself. Do you think you're going over the line? I don't think you want to control yourself, and I don't think you can, and I don't think you can stop me." And it's basically all subtext for we should just bang if there wasn't a door in the way. We should get a room. You know, yeah. I know this nice little cat. Fuck cat. Called Jack I, know, it off. Fuck we can go there. Uh, I have a hotel room. I have um, a hotel room that's fully paid for. Oh yeah. Uh it was just one of those like it was it was like the only real eye roll I have like at this entire thing is Wait, like, no, you oh, eye rolled at that but not the next scene, really? No, I like the next scene. Okay, I no. There's the a moment scene. in the next scene that I was just like, oh my god. <laughs> but <laughs> I will get there. Okay, okay, fair enough. Um Okay, so we have we have that, um, and then he gets basically let go. Like the uh, the attorney person turns up and is like, "Yeah, you should not be here. This was dumb. Um, what were you doing arresting him? I'm going to talk to your captain in the morning." She's like, "Yeah, whatever. Fuck off." Uh, and that's basically seen, I think, in that little bit. <laughs> um, and then we see Otaga go down to the morgue, um, and it, she goes down to the morgue, checks nobody's there. Uh, she opens like cold chamber seven, and the Which little list says, empty. "Cold, uh, cold chamber, <laughs> cold chamber seven is empty." And I've got down, cold chamber seven is not empty. No. Why? What the fuck is she doing? Storing the dead woman that we keep seeing in fucking water. Mm -hmm. Which, by the way, this is also where you see uh, we round out the uh, the genital count here because you straight up just see a like fully naked woman. Yeah, like yeah. it's not even like movies where there's like, oh no, it's just like you know pubes. Nope, totally shaved, totally naked. There it is. Yeah, it's not even like some of those ones that which are really clever. They have like little blankets across the groin, nope. or they have the lights too bright in a particular nope. set of areas. Nope, you see everything. Um, yeah, so you round out seeing everything on everyone in this yeah. scene. Uh, and she basically looks at the woman and goes, "Your mother loved you." And um, that's where we see all that. I'm like, okay, what's this is uh this is fucks up and weird. Yep. Uh, I'm with it. I'll I'll take it. <laughs> but then it goes to Kolarash going back to his hotel, back to the Raven. Uh, <laughs> there is okay, Undead Band. When I watched it the first time, I kept seeing like more and more nudity, and it's like, okay, what the fuck? Just there's so much nudity in this show, and never when you expect it. <laughs> it's like surprise nudity. It really um... is. <laughs> uh, but he goes back. <laughs> he goes back to the Raven. And Poe is like, oh yeah, there's someone in your hotel room. And oh, okay. So this this is this is why this I is like the scene this scene. I rolled my eyes at. This is why this is why I like this scene because it was set up in a certain way, right? So we go in and Poe is watching these like gangster gumshoe like uh, detective things, and he's mm -hmm. like, I could be your I could be your psychic. The psychic, psychic always dies. Guy, but I'm an AI, so I can't. And he's like, let me be part of your uh, be part of your investigation. And he's like, no. And he's like. Well, that's not very like witty, comebacky like detective. And he's like, "Fuck no," which <laughs> was amazing. And then he tells him that so, so it's already setting up this whole kind of like nineteen twenties like gumshoe detective private eye bullshitty thing, because they take that motif, they take that idea that's been set up by Poe, they put the music which you think of and when you hear when you think that, 
the lighting in there is only lit by like flickering lights which sets the mood to rather being this like pale blue that we've seen all around is actually slightly warm not a lot but very slightly warmer than the rest of the uh, rest of the episode that we've seen so far and it's clearly set up for that moment of i need to seduce you <laughs> yes but, amazing okay so he goes upstairs and he finds um bancroft's wife i cannot think of her first name right now i think it begins with an l i think so uh, whatever. We'll call her Mrs. Bancroft. Mrs. Bancroft. He finds her up there, and she. he's like, did you know about his uh, trips to jack it off or whatever? And she's like, oh, yeah. But uh, he's only ever had children with me, and we've had, like, 12 children 21. or something. 21 children. And he's like, she's only had kids with me. Children. But, you know, we've been alive for so long that it's having sex with each other is kind of, you know, it, 300 years of sex with the same person, I'm sure anybody would be like, okay, yeah, let's, like, Let's do something crazy. Also, yeah, rich and, people are weird. Yeah, also That's rich what we're people are weird. From this oh, show. And also on the flip side, it's like at this point, like the body is just a body. It has a certain one in the eyes. Exactly. It doesn't matter. Like because the body. In the show, they do a very good job of people. Okay, I have an ambulance going by. Cool. Uh, people do a very good job of of separating uh, the person from the body. You yes. Know, the body has desires that it wants that that she's like, I can't fulfill all of his desires because some of his desires are things that like, I just, I can't do. Uh, <laughs> but he loves me and he only has kids with me. And that's like, he, Bancroft himself is with me, but yeah, his body wants certain things that I can't, I can't give him. So yeah, yeah you know, whatever his body does something. It's no big <sighs> deal. Yeah. But so then, basically she just wants to know how far along he's gotten. Yep. Which is a pretext for, I just want to fuck you. I just want to fuck uh-huh. you. And here's why I rolled my eyes, because you find out this sleeve is a genetically modified sleeve that produces a drug that produces a drug that makes each person feel what the other person's feeling. And it's just, it's such, it's that moment of, this is a, this is a 12 year old boy's future <laughs> fantasy nonsense <laughs> And we also, oh, we, we finalize the rounded out of, of uh, swear words when she says, it's in my cunt. Yes. Uh, like, I was oh, just like. We, we've hit the last one. Okay, there we yeah. go. So she, she like, yeah, so it's like this drug is secreted when I'm aroused. It's secreted in my sweat, in my saliva. It's secreted in my cunt. I was just like, oh boy, round of applause right there. Good, uh, good we've fucking. We've said all the words. We said all the words. Uh, spoiler alert, we've just said those words. Um, we did. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Sorry about that if you have an issue with that word, but it was you, so I'm just using it in context. We're we're quoting. (laughs) We're quoting. We're quoting. Um, Yeah, so there was there was that, and she takes off her clothes, and again, you just see everything. You, you, yeah, the whole, the whole kick. And then it goes from, which is also funny because in the first episode we have this very tastefully done sex scene to (laughs) softcore porn scene. (laughs) Yeah, it basically is. It's incredible. It's a very big difference between the first scene, which is this very like connection heavy only close-up face like headshots yeah to this wide shot you know pinning her against the wall like soft core sex i th- i think i think it's trying to show the difference between an intimate i think and that's relationship that's what it feels like purely physical and I, I totally that's what comes across yeah uh and it from that point we get we cuts between that and uh ortega confessing yeah, where she it's, says um, she's done terrible things. <laughs> it starts off with like she wants to confess her lustful thoughts, yes. <laughs> which I thought was amazing because we have that, and then we have fucking like literally backwards and forwards between yes. this and the confession, <laughs> it's like, which uh, I thought was yeah. really cool. Um, so she's repenting all the horrible shit she's done, mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. then you see her leave like the confessional booth thing. Oh, but and... she opens her hand in the in the booth. Yeah, in and, the in booth, her... and she has a stack. She has a stack. Like her hand is covered in blood, and she's holding holding a stack. Yeah. Uh, and then it cuts right after that cuts to the morgue uh, and the the girl who's been missing is laying on the, the table and the, mor- the mortician walks in. He's like, what the fuck? Goes over and looks at her, moves her hair. And you see in the mirrored surface of the table that her stack has been cut out. Yeah. And you're like, oh, Ortega has her stack. Or at least that's what you're supposed to be. That's. The connection you should draw, honestly. Which is obviously something not supposed to be done because this girl is not supposed to be spun up. Exactly. Uh, and Skagath, the show name of the show is Altered Carbon, and uh, there's so much nudity in it. Just so much nudity. It's it surprised Dick. It surprised everything. It's, it's uh, surprise. <laughs> it's 
uh, yeah, we'll get onto the recommendations in a minute, but yeah, it's it's there. Yeah. Um, and yeah, and we find out that she has this stack, and then we cut back to Kovacs and Mrs. Bancroft. Um, for whatever reason, his dick is covered. Um, yeah, also weird. He, as far as I know, the only person who got their dick out in this is Lawrence Bancroft. I don't remember anyone else, <laughs> which I think is funny. <laughs> maybe maybe it's maybe it's a case of like he got it in his claws like maybe, in, in like, like the actor's contract like i'm not showing my dick but it uh, also no. it makes me think that one day on set or right before shooting started all the actors got together and they're like all right who's comfortable showing their dick and the only one who was like yes was the guy who plays lawrence who's just like yeah you can show my dick i don't care show my taint butthole i don't care what's going on what do we need <laughs> he's like this is real acting yeah it's it's i'm so glad they had at least I, I like I, I'm straight up by I want to take everything that moves but I'm so <laughs> glad they actually had at least a dick in here because otherwise it's just the women showing everything off and I would be like that's not that's not that's not great that means that's I, not great I don't remember if they show any any other dicks but I know like I remembered Lawrence Bankoff because that one is very shocking because there's no warning for it done <laughs> just like oh okay <laughs> um, that was very funny but yeah, yeah it, it's, uh, so it's one of those moments of when you're expecting nudity to happen in a, in a movie or whatever, like it doesn't matter what shows up, you're expecting it, you're like, okay. But this was, aha, uh-huh, cool, cool, having a very clinical discussion about a murder, dick. Uh, dick, yeah. You're like, <laughs> what? <laughs> Yeah, so so essentially, like the last shot, I think, is like them them zooming out of them on the bed, and he's like uh, he's naked, except he gets to have like a sheet over his groin because he's the main actor, and fuck you. Um, yeah. Which was yeah, uh, <laughs> that that was a thing. And then we have like the again the closing where where I realize again this show is so fucking deep on so many fucking levels. Like rather than go from like before like you know um, uh, pieces and illusion, all this good stuff, it's now. Peace is not only an illusion, but it's also just another kind of warfare. Yes. And I was like, wow, holy shit. <laughs> this, before, before we go into closing stuff, this show is an example of how you write a show. There are oh multiple gosh, layers yeah. to what's going on. It's, and when I say write a show, I mean write a show that is like a serious drama because there's a lot of stuff going on. There's a lot of little pieces in the background, a lot of little uh, clues and hints and foreshadowing and, from going from Lost in Space to this is a total like, oh my god, like yeah. change. Like Lost in Space was poorly stitched together Frankenstein, Frankenstein's monster kind of thing. Like, <laughs> and then this is like, this is a clone of, of a human. Like compared uh, to that, this 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 is very much like a, we had to cut this story and into much more nudity. Can, yes, like like we have to we have to like cut it into chunks because people will only watch an hour. It's like well which proved with binge watching that's not a thing oh, but yeah, it's no. cut into like convenient chapters like is. this is a story that will keep on going and going this isn't monster in the week this isn't something you can ch- tune in and tune out you need to genuinely watch this it's not mm-hmm. something that i could watch in the background like i do with like half a dozen of the other shows i watch like it's just in the background if i watch it i watch it. if i don't it don't it's not a big deal nothing changes but if i don't watch this i'm gonna miss so much and i want to watch this again at the end of this episode i'm like i have to hit stop and yeah. <laughs> drew drew why yeah. are you making me do this uh, <laughs> I've, I've never read the books, but this is this feels like the person who wrote this understands how chaptered storytelling is told because oh, every yeah. episode is a chapter where it's like, let's build up to this and fade back out and build back up. And you always get, you get enough to know where you're at, but it, yeah. like, it does come out to a logical end point in the episodes we've watched so far where it's just like, yeah. and here's where we fade out. We're done. Go yeah, this, this this is a high point. This is like this is high. This is like this is this is pace. This is not pace. This is a cliffhanger. This is not a cliffhanger. Yep. This it, like just the two episodes alone. Like if I had to just like say yeah, watch a thing based on two episodes, I I, mean, I I generally try and hold up to watch the third episode. Like the point where it goes on Netflix. Do you want to keep watching? Um, I normally wait till then to do a, a, a thing. So I have to. Yep. I don't want to do it on this though. <laughs> well, uh, I'm gonna ask you. But that now. was the episode. <laughs> yeah, that was the episode. Um, it's really good. But I'm gonna ask. Valanda, how would you rate this episode? I'm, I'm going to go five light bulbs. Five light bulbs. I love it. Uh, what were your favorite parts of this episode? Um, I I liked the dis- I liked the the discussion of the mother who'd lost a child with the religious coding and needed to talk to her, and the mother who was like, "I wouldn't want to spin you up." I love those. I love that whole arc there. I liked learning uh, about how how the stacks have been changed and how they can be uh, like. 
how people can still suffer in them. Like, is this assault or is it coding? Because they talk about glitching and, and like feedback loops and yeah. stuff. And there's a nice little thing there. I'm like, that's that's cool to learn about. I love that little story. Um, surprised Richard, which was uh, well, that blew me away. Um, <laughs> holy shit! And just the pure amount of like nakedness and the fact that this series is going to go to that limit because quite a lot of the violence is quite gory and very like realistic. Like it's it's oh, harsh. Yeah. And I just like this. This has no line. I, I fucking love it. It's beautiful. It's been consistent. The story writing is good. Everything is dropped in as it should be naturally, without making it feel forced. And if there's foreshadowing, I picked up maybe one or two bits in here, but it didn't feel like that kind of episode. Oh yeah, just, oh, I love it. That's um, why it's five. What about you, Drew? I'm also gonna rate it a five. This episode is uh, definitely watching back. First time, this episode was not my favorite of them. But watching back and remembering all the things I remember, this episode is a five because of how much stuff they layer in there that is going to pay off so perfectly at the end. <clears throat> it's a little unfair, but... It's okay. It's okay. This is... Th this is... An... Okay, so first time watching it, first episode was a five, second episode, like a three and a half, and then it goes back <laughs> up. But again... In hindsight, this episode is also a five because all these little things that you will know later. It's like, I know all of this. I know what it is. I know what that is. <laughs> and it all makes perfect sense. Uh, yes. It, That's, yeah. It's um, very good. Um, Valanda, would you recommend this uh, series to anyone based off two episodes? I would recommend it based off of two episodes, but I'll hold my light bulb floating until next week. <laughs> That's fair. That's fair. <laughs> if you haven't seen it so far, go watch it because I know it's fucking awesome. Yeah. Uh, I do agree. If you have not seen this, you should watch Altered Carbon um, or wait till we're done reviewing it and then watch it just so... Because you're going to want to, like, you're going to want to binge it. I promise. Yeah. You will start well, it and you will probably not want to put it down. Yeah, I don't. I am very sad I have to keep waiting. Uh, or, or, or you could be ahead of the curve and watch three episodes by the time this comes out next week, which if you're listening to it on the podcast, then uh, it's just not going to help. But no, if you're if you're joining us for the live, watch the three and then you could join in the discussion. Exactly. Then. then you could come onto the <laughs> chat and tell us things that we missed or, you know, oh, yeah. tell us characters' names because we're both really bad about remembering names. <laughs> yeah like i try and write them out but then i i forget because i'm like oh there's a thing happening i'd rather watch that than right now so yeah. it was good i enjoyed this very 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 much it's, um, it's a very well done series um yeah. i don't know how we're gonna th now granted i think the uh the the wonderful difference between lost in space and this one is we made fun of lost in space for 11 <laughs> episodes this one we're basically just like this is really cool and look at that and look at that and i don't i don't know like we haven't found anything really good to make fun of in this one <laughs> So it's because, like, I think the only thing we could make fun of would be like the Poe character and that whole setup there, but it's meant to be like yeah. that. Also, why would you make fun of Poe? Like the Raven Hotel is. It's incredible. Like, I would go stay there. Like this place is like this. This appeals to my macabre nature. This is this is beautiful. I would I would stay there. Like this hotel is fucking it's... rad. Oh. Um, and like the entire point of this like whole whole like Poe thing is it's just that little bit of humor that we have in there. Just. It, carefully sprinkled like yeah. here and there it's, it doesn't make it a comedy in any way shape or form it doesn't detract from anything it's just occasionally in there i think poe is a good vehicle for that i very much love it so poe's very good and i i can't really shit out of anything you can't, you can't, like the writing's really done the act like well done the acting's good like there's nothing to make fun of in this except for i guess poe but poe is supposed to be kind of like a comic relief yeah yeah exactly that's yeah there we go i think that's that's it then are we <laughs> okay, well, Skagath has a problem with it. All right. Which is uh, that Joel Kinnaman is maybe a main person in it, and he doesn't like the way he looks surprising <laughs> or questioning. Or <laughs> well, he's in a movie shot all in all. Maybe I'll look through this season at one point. I, I don't know who Joe Kinnaman is. I don't know. I'm going to look, I'm gonna have to look to find out. Um, oh, um, I also found out who that random person is that we couldn't name last week. Yes, who is that? Um, I still can't. I, I still don't know his name, but I know what he's in. He's been in Dollhouse as the detective Paul. Okay. He has been in Supernatural as one of the angels. He's been in Battle Scar, uh, Battle Star Galactica. Um, okay. He's basically been in a lot of stuff. Ah, Joel um, Kinnaman is uh, the main the main character. Ah, uh, right. Okay. <laughs> he looks like he needs a bath break. <laughs> uh, you know what I. <laughs> I, I kind of agree with the he looks like he needs a bath break I'll, I'll give you that one <laughs> um okay yeah no I recognize him from a couple of those things that's that's where that guy's from 
Yep, there you go. I, I did my research. I found out who it was. Yeah, <laughs> like, oh, and I also remember exactly the scene where he's half naked. It's in Dalha, so yeah. All right, well, there you go. Here we go. Uh, All right, we're well, done then. So uh, <laughs> let's do our closing things and let's uh, get the fuck out of here. Let's get the fuck out of here. Uh, hi, I'm Blonda. You can find me on Twitter at blood underscore BTP. You can find me every Monday as the voice of Bitcron um, um, in the Lucky Die podcast. And you can see me tomorrow on this channel, or yeah, tomorrow on this channel where I'm playing Wreck and Ruin with Casey, Neil, Arch, and Onyx. Okay, that's me out. Beautiful. Peace uh, out, bro. <laughs> I'm Drew Tillman, and you can find me every Friday here doing Couch for It. You can find me every other Monday on Taking Initiative, where I'm playing one of. I don't know, some characters, number, or whatever. <laughs> don't remember which one you're playing. <laughs> I mean, I know who I'm playing, but I don't know where... What if you just... What if this is the first episode? I spoiled something for you. What if you watched oh, this okay. and you went to listen to Taking Initiative? You'd be very confused or spoiled. Okay. It's, it's you play a character. Yeah, I play a character. <clears throat> um, I guess it's the world I can't really die. <laughs> if we do, there's no podcast. Exactly. <laughs> hmm. uh, you can find me on Twitter at NotThatDrew, which is a great place to follow me because I have several streams that take place at various times and I don't want to list all of them right now because we'll be here a weird amount of time. Anyway, that's me. It's great <laughs> seeing all of you. Uh, come out next Friday and watch us review episode three and probably tell you how much we enjoyed it. Unless it's really bad. Unless it's really bad, in which case you're about to hear the, the mother of all tirades. <laughs> oh, Undead Band. That's, that's just true. <laughs> What? What? I, I just... Dead Van says the most characters besides Josh. Oh, <laughs> burn. That's, that's just true. I, it's that's, not even mean. It's true. just what it is. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Anyway, uh, we will see you next Friday for another episode. Um, see if I. Yeah. Thanks for coming back. Right. Bye, guys. Bye.